Hi guys, I'm Randy and today on BRS TV we're going to take a look at using the Neptune Apex Aquarium Controller as the control center for the basic and most common reef gear that supports life in your tank. Today we'll discuss how interlinking that gear together can help make your tank become safer, more intelligent, and overall easier to run. We'll do this by walking you through how easy it's become to set up your Apex to achieve these goals. As I mentioned earlier, there's three main reasons why many reefers choose to add an aquarium controller to their tanks, making the system safer, not only for the tank itself, but for your home as well, making the system easier to run by controlling equipment through the push of a button or an app on a computer or smartphone, and finally, to make the system more intelligent by utilizing the redundancy and automation to react to certain events or parameters in the tank, as well as by keeping you immediately informed no matter where you are. With a controller, you get redundancy from your equipment, which means adding your equipment to an Apex controller almost immediately makes your tank safer. Let's face it, as much as we'd love to, most reefers' daily lives are not spent sitting in front of the tank, and you can not only save your tank from potential equipment failure, but you can also get instant push notifications or text messages to your phone or through email when something in the tank is not right. So rather than a heater being controlled by its own internal thermostat, you can have it turn on and off from a separate and sometimes more accurate thermostat, like the one included with the Neptune Apex, which can override any possible failure. Along with that, you can have other essential equipment like lights, fans, or chillers work together intelligently to react specifically to temperature parameters rather than rely on their own internal controls. Another reason reefers choose to hook up an Apex controller to their tank is to make them easier to run. Many of us have used simple timers or power strips to manually turn on and off equipment for when we're feeding or maintaining our tanks, and at some point we may have forgot to come back and physically turn them back on. With automation from the Neptune Apex, we can not only tell our equipment to turn back on after a certain amount of time, but we can also set up alerts to know if it doesn't come back on. One of the most intelligent things we can have our tanks do is to tell us when something isn't functioning correctly or at all. With that in mind, who wouldn't like to be notified if a return pump stopped working, or if the tank temp was soaring past the highest setting, or even that the water had been detected outside of the sump or tank itself? With the Neptune Apex's cloud control and notification platform, all of these parameters can not only be monitored, but can also be used to keep you up to date on your tank's operation in nearly real time. There's a nearly endless list of available accessories for the Neptune Apex, like the auto top-off kit, fluid monitoring kit, leak detection kit, dose and DDR, PAR monitoring kit, additional pH, ORP, temperature and salinity probes, lunar simulator modules, automatic feeders, and a whole lot more to allow you to do nearly anything with this controller. However, my top three accessory choices would definitely be the LDK leak detection kit, which can provide your tank with even more safety and protection against potential tank or sump leaks, the auto top-off kit that has to be one of the safest ATOs on the market with over three layers of redundant safety measures and alerts, and finally the dose, dose and fluid metering system, which has an adjustable dosing speed to allow for more accurate dosing of major, minor, and trace elements, or can be utilized for automatic water changes. One last accessory I have to mention, if you're a reef geek like I am when it comes to reef gear, the breakout box for the Apex has got to be one of the most useful but underutilized pieces of equipment that uses all kinds of switches to evolve your tank to become nearly fully automated. In today's project, we'll walk through the basic setup steps for the Neptune Apex as we follow their super simple step-by-step -step setup process, as well as discuss some task functions that we find most valuable when first hooking up your controller to your tank. In the step-by-step -step instructions, we'll help you get an idea of just how easy you can add an Apex to your tank without needing any sort of programming knowledge. We'll also walk you through some very helpful and valuable task functions for setting up your specific date and time zone, how to easily calibrate pH, temperature, and salinity probes, and set up perimeter alarms for them, as well as setting up alarms if your equipment stops drawing power. Let's talk briefly about installing the Neptune Apex on your system. The first step is to find a spot that is free from splashes or salt creep, in which case we found that mounting everything to a separate board next to the tank or sump not only kept our equipment safe, but also helped to keep everything organized and sleek looking. 
If you like what we did, all you really need to do is go get a piece of shelving from your hardware store, map out where you want your equipment to go, drill larger holes for cord management, and use something like these cable management grommets for a desk. Once that's done, you can navigate to the Get Started website listed on the card included with your Neptune Apex and start the easy setup process. Let's get started on setting up your Neptune Apex using the simple to follow setup instructions from the online guide. The first page you'll find will help you identify the components and connections of the Apex controller and even offers printable mounting templates for precise mounting of your base unit and energy bar hardware. From there, you can connect the base unit to the energy bar using the included Aquabus cable, plug the power supply into the wall, and you're ready to connect your system to your home's internet or Wi-Fi connection. On the next page, you should see that the base unit is ready for setup when the blue status light is lit up, and you can choose the device you want to use for setup, which can be done on any iOS or Android hardware, as well as a Mac or PC computer. Today we'll set up our new Apex via the Wi-Fi connection, which means we'll have to connect to its internal Wi-Fi hotspot by finding the Apex Wi-Fi signal and connecting directly to it. Once connected, I can click the provided Apex local link, and on the next screen I'll choose my home's Wi-Fi network, enter my Wi-Fi password, hit connect, and the Apex will automatically connect to the internet in my home. Now with your Apex connected to the internet, sign into the local dashboard by using the default username and password, and you'll get your first look at the new Apex dashboard. After you get access to your Apex dashboard, simply go back to the setup page and choose a setup option that best fits your comfort level with Apex setup. No matter which setup option you choose, the very first step is to check for any firmware updates for the Apex unit. To do this, simply go back to the Apex dashboard and find the icon that looks like a Wi-Fi signal. Before plugging in equipment, the first thing I like to do is link my Apex to an Apex Fusion account, which is the cloud-based control for your tank that will allow you to access it from anywhere and on any device. In order to do this, go back to your local dashboard, click the user icon in the upper right corner, and choose Link Apex. As you can see on your Apex dashboard, there's quite a bit going on, so the first thing I like to do is clean things up and leave only my essential outlets and information visible. You can arrange your dashboard however works best for you, and in order to do so, just click the lock icon in the upper right of the screen, and you'll be able to hide some of the more advanced options, as well as move icons around. Since we're starting with just the basic life support equipment, we can remove some of the advanced options like switches labeled SW1 through 6, accessory outlets identified by the Link A and Link B naming convention, as well as variable speed outlets named VAR speed 1, 2, 3, and 4. We'll also be able to free up some space by removing the aquarium camera option, but remember that all of these we can pull back out and use later on down the road. With just the essential outlets left, you can see that each outlet is pre-labeled for controlling equipment like lights, return pump, heater, skimmer, a reactor pump, a refugium light, and a fan. These outlets come already programmed to do the most common functions, and really all you have to do is plug your equipment into the corresponding outlet. To help you identify which outlet goes with which icon on the dashboard, Neptune has numbered them for you. The last number you'll see in each outlet name directly corresponds with the outlet on the energy bar, which is numbered 1 through 4 across the top row and 5 through 8 across the bottom. Don't worry if your specific equipment doesn't match the preset outlets, you can use the ones that work best for you as well as make minor adjustments to their default settings or simply turn off the outlets you don't need. One key thing to remember here is that these outlets are not set in stone, meaning you could rename and program any one of them to specifically meet your needs. With that in mind, the default setting for lights in outlet number one, which is for common blue lights on basic light fixtures, is 12 hours from 9 a.m. to 2100 or 9 p.m., while the lights in outlet two, which are for more daylight type lights, are set from 9.30 a.m. to 20.30 or 8.30 p.m. If you find this a bit much for your specific light setup, you could always click the cogwheel in the upper right and adjust the time to meet your needs. The return pump goes in outlet number three, which is pre-programmed to run a typical 24 hours a day. Neptune also included a function that will shut the return pump off when feed mode cycle A is activated. This can allow your fish the chance at getting to the food in your tank before it ends up going down the overflows and into the sump. The next outlet can be used for your heater, which is already preset to turn on when the tank is below 78 degrees and turn off when it reaches 79 degrees. 
This is also something you can adjust on your own, but it's important to remember to set your heater's internal temperature control to a couple degrees higher than the apex settings in order for the apex to control the heater while its internal controls act as a backup. In outlet number five, you can plug in your skimmer, which is also pre-programmed to run for 24 hours and will also shut off along with the return pump during the feed cycle A. However, the skimmer will wait for five minutes after the return pump comes back on before starting the skim again, which can save you from an overflowing skimmer cup when the water level in the sump is too high. If you have a small reactor or small pump that you would also like to run for 24 hours a day, you can plug it directly into the pre-programmed outlet number six named pump. Along with that, outlets number seven and eight come with default settings for a refugium light that is on during a reverse cycle of the display lights from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. And it's also set to turn off if your tank temp ever rises above 81 degrees. This also leads to the fan outlet, which is preset to come on if the tank temperature is above 80 degrees and will shut off when it drops below 79. Again, it's important to mention that you can rename and adjust any of these outlets to match your specific tank equipment and needs, but for the basic setup, the predetermined outlets are usually a great place to start. Also, at any time, you can override the regular programming of an outlet if you wanted to turn it on or off by command by simply moving the toggle to off or on, then back to auto when you're done. With that said, and with our main life support equipment plugged in, let's take a quick look at some valuable tasks functions that Neptune has created to help make activating more features even easier. The tasks configuration is full of useful auto programming functions where all you have to do is answer a few questions and seemingly complex tasks are activated with ease. In this section, we'll explore setting your apex clock, calibrate the pH, temp, and salinity probes, as well as add power usage alarms to warn you when a piece of equipment isn't drawing the wattage it normally does when it's on. These quick tasks functions can be especially handy for programming your equipment if you didn't want to or couldn't use the Apex default settings. The first task we'll explore is to set up the clock in order to ensure that your timed functions like the lights turning on and off happen when they're supposed to. All you have to do is walk through the four steps to set the clock and you're done. Let's move on to calibrating your probes with the tasks function, which takes as little as five steps or only eight steps at most. The quickest probe to calibrate is the temp probe, which can be done by using a few regular thermometers and averaging them, or for a more precise calibration, a single thermometer like this one from Traceable. Simply follow the prompts and hit calibrate, and when your thermometers have settled, you can enter the new temp into the final field, hit next, and you're done. For the next probe calibration, you'll need some pH calibration solution in the 7 and 10 range, as well as a small glass of RODI water to rinse the probe in between calibrations. It's always best practice to let the solutions acclimate to your tank's water temp by floating them for a few minutes before calibration. Now you can follow the prompts in the tasks function, and when the range and reading have settled for both the 7 and 10 solutions, you're done. The last probe to calibrate is your salinity or conductivity probe, which is also super easy to do with the tasks function. Simply acclimate your solution to your tank's water temp like we did for the pH solutions, follow the prompts for calibration, and that's it. The last tasks function we'll talk about is how to program email and text alerts for your temp, pH, and salinity probe parameters, as well as power usage alarms for equipment like the return pump. For probe alerts and alarms, all of them can be programmed using the same tasks function for probe alarms. In which case, simply choose the probe you want to set up alarms for, like the temp probe here, set the minimum and maximum levels, then click next. The final screen for each probe alert will tell you when the alarm will be triggered. For example, on our temp probe, we'll get an alert if the temp falls below 75 degrees or rises above 82. In order to program an alarm for your return pump, if it isn't drawing the same wattage amount that it normally does when operating, you can use the power usage alarm task. Just choose the return pump outlet and set the minimum and maximum wattage draw parameters. One thing to note here, the apex will notify you whether or not you have enough historical wattage draw data to accurately set these alarm parameters, in which case you can always come back to this function and set them accordingly. The last thing to do to ensure that you get the email and text alerts for the alarms you just set up is to add your contact information to your Apex Fusion account. To do this, click the user icon in the top right of your dashboard screen, choose Settings and Notification. 
Now you can click the plus arrow and choose one of the major cellular service providers for text alert notifications, or choose the email method for email alerts. And if you've downloaded the Neptune Apex app, you can also get push notifications to your phone. With this valuable feature, you can also add family members or tank maintainers to your notifications if you're ever away from your tank. As with all the gear we use for our reefs, maintenance is key to keeping them working for the long haul. Maintenance for the Neptune Apex itself is pretty simple and really only means that you should stay up to date with any firmware updates to the Apex itself and to any of its modules. For accuracy and overall longevity of your probes, it's also best practice to keep them clean and calibrate them occasionally. When cleaning them, you can use some RODI water in a soft brush and be sure to acclimate your calibration solutions to the tank temp before calibrating the probes themselves. Thanks for watching, and if you have any more questions that we didn't answer here, feel free to give us a call, send us an email, or hop on a chat. See you next time on BRS TV.